Coming up next on our first edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page for the spring semester, we'll visit with Mules basketball coach Kim Anderson about his MIAA leading squad, winners of seven straight. Jenny's basketball is 14-2 and, and ranks 16th in the nation this week. And we'll talk Jenny's hoops tonight with head coach Dave Slifer. In our sports page student athlete spotlights, we'll get to know the leading scorers for UCM basketball, Dominique Long and Kiana Flax. So stay tuned. Your weekly inside look at UCM Mules and Jenny Sports is next. Mules basketball is 13-3 and 7-1, and and leading the MIAA, a one-game lead right now in the conference standings as we approach the midway mark in league play. Joining us now to talk about Mules basketball is head coach Kim Anderson. Coach A, welcome back. Good to be back for the spring semester, Sean. Well, right now, a good times for Mules basketball, a seven-game win streak, the longest in the 15-team MIAA. Talk about the keys to that success. Well, I think we've become... Uh better as a team as far as playing together. I, I think early on we, we struggled in defining who was going to do what and, and who our best shooters were and, and what each guy's strength was. And, and I really think in the last three or four weeks we've kind of uh, come to understand each other's roles better and, more importantly, executed them. Our defense has been solid, um, at times really good. And uh, offensively, we've been able to shoot the basketball uh, fairly well from the perimeter and get some good play on the inside. You know, another interesting thing is how the schedule sets up. When the team was up and down a little bit at the beginning of the season, it seemed like we were playing just one game a week and then a week of practice and another game. It seems like since we've gotten into a rhythm playing twice a week, the team has gotten better. Well, nobody likes to practice <laughs> except, except the coach. So uh, I think that has helped us. I, I think we're more into a Wednesday-Saturday routine now. And our guys know that, that on uh, – you know, for example, today we have to get ready for Northwest. We didn't practice very hard. Uh, you know, tomorrow will be a, a, a little bit tougher practice as far as preparation. Uh, Monday's really our big work day because, uh, you know, we, we don't have a practice on Sunday. And then Tuesday we get ready for the next opponent. So it's, they like it because it's not as hard. And, uh, but it requires more mental preparation probably than uh, it does physical. Seven straight wins. Last week, a really tough one. Two games on the road, 1,148 miles on the tires, a win at Nebraska Kearney, a new member of the league, and then a win in Kirksville in your final trip to Truman State uh, for an MIAA game where you ended up going 11-0 against the Bulldogs. So that was a good week on the road. Well, it was. It was a tough week. You know, I think when you, when you initially look at that schedule and you see at Kearney, at Truman, uh, originally scheduled for a Thursday Saturday and we were able to move it back to Wednesday Saturday uh, you realize hey you're gonna be on that bus quite a bit so I think it's really a, a credit to our guys I thought they did a good job of focusing on on each individual game uh, I wouldn't say we played particularly great especially against Truman uh, but I thought we played well enough in the last five minutes to win the game and uh, you know that's important anytime you can go on the road in this league and win doesn't matter what place the team is you're playing it's really really important Last night, a good night for the Mules as you hosted Missouri Western at the Multi. We'll go to the highlights, and it was a, a great night for UCM basketball. We honored uh, Tom Smith, his 38th and final year as a head coach, five of them at Central, and we won, so it was a perfect night. Well, it was good. Tom, uh, obviously a fantastic coach, uh, began his career here, and he's had a great run at Missouri Western, decided to to uh, retire at the end of this year. We obviously wish him well. Speaking of runs, a 16 to one run for your team after you were down four to nothing early. We're seeing the midst of it right here. Great energy from your team and they were knocking down threes. Well, we made some shots. We got inside the zone a little bit, kicked it out and, and uh, were able to uh, knock down some shots. And, and that was that was important early on uh, because their zone's a little bit different. And uh, uh, we were able to hit some shots. There's Damo hitting along when uh, the, he does so well. Yeah, your team has not shot the three extremely well this year, but you were six of seven from three to start this game. Well, we've shot better lately because I think we've got the right guys shooting the ball. And the guys that don't shoot it particularly well, 
don't, uh, don't take as many three-point shots, and the guys that do shoot it well do take them, and that's, that's a real key, I think, and there's a guy right there that can shoot it, Brian Mogjash. And I mean, they are pretty. Yeah, yeah, they go swish through. They, they swish through, they don't hit the rim. And they've got that nice rotation on them. They are fun to watch. There was a technical foul called on Coach Smith in his final game at the multi, I guess somewhat apropos, and, and uh, Dominique Long hit the free throws again. A, a great start, but you gotta credit Western. They came roaring back. They made this thing a ball game by well, the half. Well, you, you, knew, you knew they would. They're, they're a very athletic team. Again, the zone presents some problems for you in that it's a little bit different look than what you've seen from other people. And, Fortunately, our guys uh, hung in there and, and fought off their runs, and I thought in the second half we played a lot better. The first half we turned the ball over way too much and gave them uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 to 20 extra points. When we go to the second half, that guy right there, Charles Hamburg, we're going to see a heavy dose of him. He was exceptional. Yeah, did a great job. Uh, you know, he's a guy that we need to get the ball to in the middle of the floor because he is so, you know, I call him slippery. He can he can get around guys and make plays and and uh, there's a good hustle play by Lance Beckwith. And you saw that 2-1-2. You know, we haven't seen the 2-1-2 since we played Rollins in Vegas mm -hmm. in the High Desert Classic a few years ago. That's a very different defense than you're accustomed to playing against. Well, it is. There's a good drive by Widget. Uh, you know, it's, it's really a, a defense that um, kind of forces you out of what you normally want to do. I and mean, they kind of cup you in there in the in the middle of the court and uh, you have to be careful because they got some long arms quick hands that was a halftime score 35 31 the time was running down there on the halftime clock what was your message to the team at the half up for Quit turning the ball over i think that was the main thing you know we were giving them too many uh second shots uh rebounding i thought a rebounding was okay but not as good as it needed to be and then just uh, take care of the ball better. And we did that. We only turned it over three times in the second half. And there's Chuck, as we affectionately call him. Man, he attacked in the second half. They just didn't have an answer for him. He's a uh, he's a competitor. Doesn't like to lose. And uh, I think he got comfortable. And there's a good rebound. We need that. Uh, you know, as we go forward. And I tell you, Widget and Lance right there in the picture, those guys in this win streak, they've been pretty darn solid overall. Well, they play, for the most part, they've played within themselves. You know, uh, each guy has certain attributes and they've played to those strengths. Uh, you know, they've taken good shots for the most part. They've done a good job defensively and done a pretty good job of taking care of the basketball and getting the ball to the right people. And uh, that's really, really important. And that's one of Widget's good shots there, the pull-up jumper. And we see the mules here starting to add some separation in the second half. You went on another pretty good sized run fairly early in the half. This is one of the prettiest shots you're going to see. That was right in front of us, nothing yeah. but the bottom of the net. Yeah, Ryan really shot the ball well, and, and he's starting to get some confidence and starting to get a lot better defensively. And that's, that's what he needed to work on to play more, and he's done a good job. And there's probably a play that sums up the game and the key to victory, Chuck, yeah, taking it to the, the cup. Get the ball in the middle of the zone, and, and you know the, the zone is designed not to let that happen. And if you can get it in there, it usually you can break it down. You know, one thing we haven't talked a lot about, Coach A, the defense has been pretty darn solid. Look at last night, you only gave up 60 points. Yeah, we've, we've been, uh, for the most part, pretty good. Uh, you know, we've had some lapses. I thought in the Truman game, we played kind of at their pace. We needed to pick the game up a little bit, and we did. And, and uh, there's an athletic move by Chuck. Uh, in the paint. See the Mules football team there behind the Mules and a great crowd. Blackout night, Team UCM night, a couple of great promotions from the UCM Spotlight group from Campus Activities and our innovative public relations student group. Terrific crowd, 4,200. Oh, fantastic and uh, you know the Spotlight group did a great job and in, in the uh, social media uh, program was outstanding. I, I didn't get a chance to watch a whole lot of it. Obviously in our game, <laughs> I watched some of it in the Jenny's game, but you know, it was a great crowd and really, really helped us, uh, I think helped our guys. Central Missouri basketball, as you see the final there, 19-0 and at home this year between the Gens and your team. Yeah, well, I hope we can keep that up. Me too. There you see the <laughs> results. So does pretty much everybody watching this show right now. 72-60, to 60, uh, the Mules with the victory. Charles Hammer, Dominique Long, 15 points each to pace four Mules in double figures. The Mules 13-3, and 7-1 and one in the MIAA, one game lead in the conference. Interesting year in the league. You play the teams in your pod twice. Everybody else, you play just one game. And I guess now that we're sitting at the top, unfortunately, there really aren't any upsets this year. We've seen Lincoln go to Northwest and win. We've seen Truman go to Washburn and win. We've seen Kearney go to Southern and win. Uh, it's really fairly tight. And your guys are to be commended to this point for so far being right there at the top. Well, you got to you got to win. First of all, you know, you and your home games are really important, and you got to do a good job at home and, and, and win hopefully every game, but almost every game at home. And then you got to go on the road and play well and, and hopefully steal a few. So 
you know, I think the this league is uh, really balanced. Uh, you know, I think you look you, you, in order to you can't get too excited right now because the schedules are are really unbalanced. And I know a team like Washburn who was picked to win the league, and rightfully so. Uh, you know, they're like three and three right now, and, and you know. People are saying, well, what's wrong with Washburn? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. They've had six of their last seven games on the road. And uh, uh, I'm not a rocket scientist, but <laughs> they're going to have a lot, a lot of games at home, including one against us uh, in February. So I think, you, you know, you, it's good. you got to take one. It's, it's a terribly overused cliche, but you got to take one game at a time. And, and our next game is Northwest. They happen to be in second place right behind us. Sure, it would be great to, uh, to put a little bit more separation. I tell you, from a fan's perspective, folks watching out there around Missouri, if you're going to come to one Mules game this year, Saturday may be the day. Northwest Missouri, great rivalry that goes back uh, a century with Central Missouri in basketball, and Northwest is obviously very good, six and two in the league. You're seven and one. It ought to be a dandy game. Yeah, great team. Um, you know, they play a little bit different type of game in that they have they they usually play two big guys. Uh, you know, 6'8", 6'10", on the inside. And so that presents a little bit of a problem, I think, for us and that we're not as big as they are. Uh, but as my old coach used to say, well, you know, you're worried about guarding them, they got worried about guarding you too. So uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a situation where, uh, you know, we're just gonna have to be uh, prepared as we can be. And, and uh, you know, they'll do some different things defensively. They'll trap you some. Um, Hopefully, shoot the ball well, and you know it's always keep keep part. We'll look ahead for the sake of television uh, next Wednesday. You will be uh, in Jefferson City, Jason Jim, to take on Lincoln, and you can't look at their record. John Redmond's team went into Maryville and knocked them off, so they're a very capable ball club. Very dangerous team. Uh, I've watched them some on uh, uh, when when they've been playing other teams, and I think that uh, you know they're a team that uh, on any given night. They throw that zone defense at you. They come out and shoot the basketball well. They can beat you. And Northwest knows that. I mean, I, I just finished watching that game earlier today, and and they really uh, they really played well against Northwest and and uh, zoned them the whole game. Kind of shook things up a little bit. Northwest didn't make shots, and then it got down to the end. And and uh, when that happens, uh, and you're you're behind, you got to really scramble. And, and Lincoln did a good job. What are you most pleased with right now about your team, and what needs to get better? Oh, I think uh, probably the thing I'm most pleased is, is that is that we've started playing better together. I, I didn't like the chemistry of this team, to be honest with you. And, and um, early on, I, I just thought that we were uh, just not fitting together very well. And, and I, I think our guys, a credit to our guys, I think they've kind of gotten together and decided what they need to do and to be better. Um, I think some of them have put their egos aside and said, you know what, here's my role, here's what I can do to help this team. Uh, and not worried about scoring points. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's that's probably to me the most pleasing thing. Um, you know, I, I think as far as what we need to work on, um, you know, I, again, I think we can get better defensively. I think we can be more dominant defensively because we are pretty athletic. And uh, I thought last night we did a, a really pretty good job. You know, if you look at that team, that's an athletic team. We did a good job of keeping guys in front of us. Um, you know, they didn't have a lot of guys make plays off the dribble. Uh, but obviously, we got to get better rebounding. And uh, I thought a couple times last night we got kind of dominated on the boards. Going back to Saturday, this coming Saturday, 3.30 at the multi for the Mules, 1.30 for the Gins. It's Military Appreciation Day. All active and retired military personnel and their families admitted free. It's also Dollar Hot Dog Day from Sodexo. A lot of former Jennies players will be in the house for Jennies reunion weekend. And Coach A, that's a big game for a lot of reasons. And, and you hit on maybe the biggest reason earlier. You got to take care of business at home. And after the Northwest game, starting next Wednesday in Jeff City against Lincoln, we've got four in a row on the road. Yeah, and you know, we really, after Saturday, we only have three more home games, and um, although we only have ten more games, I guess. So, but but still, you know, it is a home game. It is a rival. It is a team that's obviously competing with us for the championship at this point. Um, so, you know, it's important to to play well. And I think if we play well, we have a good chance to win. Uh, and then, like you said, we're uh, we're gonna hit the highway again, and you know, we do a little uh, Lincoln and Lindenwood run and, and separate trips, and then you're gonna go down to Central Oak and, and uh, Missouri Southern on the same trip. So that's a little bit different thing than what we normally do. So, um, you know, 
take them one at a time, but Saturday is obviously the first one. I want to talk about you for a moment. This coming Sunday in Springfield, you will be enshrined into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. You're already in the uh, Mizzou Hall of Fame, uh, all-century team at Mizzou. Your jersey retired at Sedalia Smith Cotton High School. Uh, Ingram's Magazine named you one of 50 Missourians to know, uh, but a pretty big honor coming up this Sunday to be inducted into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, this is probably the, the you know biggest thing for me, and, and certainly, um, you know, the honor comes to me, but it's certainly a reflection of so many different people. Uh, my, I, you know, my family obviously has been uh, with me the whole time, and and my wife Melissa has been. We've moved all over the place, and and all uh, over the world, all over the world, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And she's she's handled it great, and the kids, uh, Ryan and Brett, have been really great, and, and and of course my my dad down in Sedalia has been able to follow me, and my sister's here, and in, in our athletic department, and and then just all the coaches, and you know, I, I'm more excited, I think, Sunday about. I've, I've heard from some people that I haven't seen in a long time that are going to be there. And some of my old teammates from high school, some of my old teammates from college, um, you know, I, that'll be really special for me. And, but it really reflects everybody. It's, 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 you know, this great school here that gave me an opportunity. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about doing it, about being there, but I think I'm more excited about seeing the people and, and getting an opportunity to visit with with everybody else and it's a great class you know I've always wanted to meet Mike Sweeney and Tony Richardson <laughs> David Eckstein so whether they want to or not they'll probably meet me on Sunday they will and and I will say you are one of the most fierce competitors uh, I've ever met and I know that goes all the way back through Sedalia Smith Cotton Mizzou and here and um, I know you'll feel a lot better Sunday if we can beat Northwest on Saturday. It'll make that speech a lot easier. <laughs> Congratulations on that honor, the outstanding play from your team of late. And uh, next week, I know Bill Turnage, as we'll explain later, will uh, have a nice visit with you, hopefully talking about a couple of wins. All right, thanks, Jonesy. Coming up next here on Sports Page, we'll get to know one of Coach A's mules, senior forward Dominique Long from out of Waynesville. That's next right here on KMOS TV. They started a revolution. Women are changing the way they're thinking about themselves. We were so in your face. There were so many of us. To turn wrongs into rights. What unites women is the refusal to be manipulated any longer. And inspire generations of women to make their own way. It was exhilarating as we were breaking new ground. Makers. Henry Ford changed all of 20th century America. We're living in Henry Ford's world right now. He opened the road for ordinary Americans. The way that you create cheap products is by making more of them in a shorter amount of time. But the world he created, he longed to escape. He can't control the forces in some ways that he has helped unleash. Henry Ford on American Experience. Load up your golf clubs, grab your spikes, and head out to the first tee. As our way of saying thank you for your financial contribution at the $50 level or higher, KMOS will send you a member card. In addition to great discounts at restaurants, attractions, and bed and breakfast all across Missouri, the member card also offers two-for-one greens fees at several Missouri golf courses. Improve your swing while taking in beautiful lake vistas or experience the rumble at America's only golf course above an active mine. Take your game to the next level by playing around on us. Call 1-800-753-3436 and support KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Thank you. Thank you for watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. And welcome back to Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. In this Sports Page Student Athlete Spotlight, we'll get to know Mule Senior Forward Dominique Long.
originally from North Carolina, and I got to I got to start playing basketball um, from my dad. I mean, when I was young, uh, he was a big fan of basketball, so I watched him a lot. And then, uh, you know, I kind of just, you know, picked up from there. And then I started wanting to play myself, and then I ended up getting pretty good and got myself to college. After high school, I went to uh, Drew University, and uh, I played two years there. And then. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know, me and the coach didn't get along well, and uh, one of my friends uh, named Dusty, he, he went here, and then uh, I had called him, and then he ended up talking to the coaches for me here, and then I came on a visit and liked it, and then I left jury and came here. Uh, typical practice, we'll uh, usually get here, we'll stretch, and then, uh, you know, we'll go through some uh, light shooting, you know, kind of to get loose, and then uh, after that we go, we, we get straight into it, we uh, do full court, like, uh, we call it get back drill, where it's pretty much like a scrimmage where you uh, work on defense and different things coming up for uh, this week's games, for this week's games, and uh, so after that, then we'll probably uh, go over the other team stuff, you know, uh, you know, see what kind of offenses and defenses and things they run. And then after that, we'll go over our own offenses. And then uh, after that, I mean, uh, pretty much call it a day. Um, I, I, I mean, I like to consider myself uh, a player that, you know, I can kind of do everything well. I mean, I can shoot the ball well, I can rebound, post up, you know, play defense on different positions. So I'm kind of just like a, a versatile player that can, uh, you know, Fit in, fit in wherever a coach needs me to. Uh, obviously, we want to uh, we want to win a conference title. You know, last year we had to share with two other teams. So uh, this year we we kind of want to come out and uh, you know be uh, take it on our own. And then um, we also uh, have a, a saying. It's called Atlanta or bust. So our goal is to make it to Atlanta. That's where the Final Four will be at. So that's pretty much the only goal for the year is to make it to Atlanta. I mean, if you make it there, you pretty much accomplished all the other goals. I mean, I'm not too concerned about scoring a whole bunch of points or anything like that. I mean, as long as we're winning and making somewhere, I'll be happy. I do consider myself a leader because, um, I mean, this is my senior year and I've been here for three years, so I really know the system well, really know the coaches well. So, I mean, it, it would be like probably dumb for me not to, you know, uh, be a leader out on the court and help help the coaches and, you know, all the rest of the staff with, uh, you know, new players, filling them in with plays, helping them out with, you know, different things uh, around UCM. So I definitely consider myself a leader. I would say the most important probably uh, pointer I could give an up-and-coming athlete is listen to your cor current coaches because, I mean, most of them have been there and done it. And at the time, I know when I was in high school, there was a lot of things I didn't want to, you know, listen to my coaches about. And uh, I would say that's probably the biggest thing. If they're telling you to lift weights or do it a certain way, they're probably telling you it for a reason. So make sure you know, do what your coaches say and work as hard as you can. And you know, you'll you'll make it somewhere. Um, uh, it, it can be challenging at times being a student athlete. I mean, because you have practices to go to every single day and. Uh, you know, uh, coaches calling you for extra film sessions and things like that. So, I mean, it can get stressful, but you just got to, you know, learn to manage your time and things like that, and then you should be all right. Uh, my major is uh, finance, and uh, after college, if I can't go play professionally like I want to, I wanted to uh, get into uh, investments and, you know, uh, planning retirements and things like that for people. So I'll be like a security salesman. So if I don't, you know, get to play overseas, that's probably what I want to do. Uh, it's been a pleasure playing for Coach Anderson. I mean, uh, he is a Hall of Famer, so I mean, that's pretty much enough said right there. So you know you got to listen because the guy knows what he's doing. I mean, he's been there and done everything that we're trying to do. He's even played in the NBA and all of, I'm pretty sure all of us want to play in the NBA too. So him being a Hall of Famer, I mean, just pretty much just adds to, you know, the notches on his belt. Just, uh, you know, another person that you know you got to listen to and try to pick, pick for uh, different tips and details and things like that because, I mean, you know, he's been around, so you can learn a lot from him. The senior from Waynesville leads the Mules in scoring at just under 15 points per game, and he has shown the ability to hit clutch shots down the stretch of some big Mule wins so far this season. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll take a look back at how Central Missouri's winter sports teams performed this past week. And we'll chat with Jenny's basketball coach, Dave Slifer. All of that is on the way when Sports Page continues right after this. Henry Ford changed all of 20th century America. We're living in Henry Ford's world right now. 
he opened the road for ordinary Americans. The way that you create cheap products is by making more of them in a shorter amount of time. But the world he created, he longed to escape. He can't control the forces in some ways that he has helped unleash. Henry Ford on American Experience. I choose to be independent, to blaze my own trail. I choose what to create, how to organize, and where to share. Choose Red choose began as an inspiration and has grown into I a way of life. Ford, Ever since the Choose Red campaign began in January 2011, students have been at the heart of the I effort. All of our ads feature current potential. UCM students. Choose who better to tell choose the UCM red. story than choose those who have red. experienced what it means choose to red. choose Red and the opportunities they've had because of that choice. In August of 2012, the office responsible for development of the campaign held open auditions in the Elliott Union. University relations staff members met more than 100 talented students who made the decision to choose Red. The students shared their stories and their talents with us in hopes of being able to become part of the official Choose Red campaign. UCM students who audition will have the chance to be in any number of Choose Red campaign materials, such as TV commercials, 30-second radio spots, web videos, billboards, brochures, ads, and numerous print publications. Even Central Man stopped by to add to the fun and excitement of Choose Red Auditions 2012. With so many students willing to be part of the campaign, it's no wonder a record number of students have once again decided to Choose Red. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. And once again, thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV. Coming up in just a moment, we'll visit with the head coach of the 16th ranked Jennings basketball team, Dave Slifer. But first, let's take a look at how all the mules and Jennings performed this past week. And tonight we're talking basketball with the coaches, but wrestling in action. They had a solid performance in Marshall last Saturday. Four place winners at the Missouri Valley Invitational, highlighted by two champions. Eric Mateo went 3-0 at 141 to claim the title, and newcomer Clarence Neely went 4-0 at 184 to win his weight class. The Mules finished sixth out of 16 teams. UCM track and field had three provisional qualifiers at the UCM invite last Friday at the multi. Senior Zach Thompson in the shot put, junior Devin Claypool in the high jump, and freshman Brittany Kallenberger in the pole vault, all provisionally qualified for the NCAA indoor meet. The Mules are ranked 11th in the nation this week, while the Jennies check in at number 12. Jennies Bowling's ranked number one in the country for the first time in program history. Monday, the Jens participated in a singles challenge at McKendry in Illinois. Courtney Schultz led the way at the event with a 201 average. Jennies basketball's 14 and two overall. They are six and two in the league. The Jennies have won nine of their last 10 and they are within striking distance in what is a rugged MIAA this year. The Jens have won nine of their last 10 playing some great basketball, ranked 16th. Joining us now to talk it over is the winningest coach in MIAA women's basketball history, Dave Slifer. Coach Slifer, welcome back. Good to be here. Well, let's talk about the success for your team of late. Winners of nine of their last 10. What do you attribute that to? A lot of home games, uh, number <laughs> one. Uh, we have done a great job at home, and uh, that's uh, something that uh, my teams haven't always been great at. Uh, usually I've been pretty balanced uh, on the road or at home, and uh, this year's team is very, very good at home so far. The cardiac kids, that's for sure. Your team, we joke a lot, they're like an NBA team. They have found the way the last three minutes to just turn it on and make some incredible comebacks and win games, including we, last night. Including last night. I, I tell you what, uh, you just can't leave our game because uh, we're going to come back and, and make a game of it. Or if we are ahead, don't 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 leave because the other team's going to come back also. So it's been a uh, interesting ride. Uh, obviously, we're concerned because we are going to have some road games coming up, and we got to learn how to play on the road. And that usually means playing a little bit more consistently. And that's just has not been the the great part about this team so far. Well, since our last visit, um, tumultuous is the word I would use. I mean, Shelby Winkleman scores 42 points against Emporia State, well on her way to conference freshman of the year, and who knows what else. Terrific talent out of uh, Herman, the all-time leading scorer in Missouri basketball history. She hurts her knee in uh, Las Vegas. 
the day that you get Kiana Flax, who is eligible second semester, who's averaged 22 points per game in uh, nine games and shooting 52% from three and 77% from the free throw line and 55% from the floor. I mean, it's almost amazing. And, you know, we all wish we had those two together with our other parts, but it just, for whatever reason, wasn't meant to be this year. And they only got to play together for about five minutes of that game. And uh, Shelby uh, went up for layup and just fell on it wrong. Uh, decided, hey, better take me out for a minute. And so she took a look at it. She goes, all right, I'll try to play. She goes back in, makes a three, can't really run down the floor. So she says, I, I think something's wrong. So uh, it was an ACL. She got it uh, cut on yesterday, and uh, she'll be back quicker than any other kids can be back because she is such a great athlete. And that was That's the tragedy about this whole deal is because those two wanted to play together so badly. And it's just kind of neat because they knew, you know, they're two hardest workers in practice, and they're both athletic as all get out. Fun to, fun to coach, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you know what, we won't have her the rest of the year, but we've got three more years of her. And you've also got uh, still a real good core of players, 14-2, and two, as I mentioned, ranked 16th, and, um, you know, the catalyst for everything really is your All-American, Nicole Cadell. She averages a double-double, one of two players in the league to average a double-double, and one of the nation's best in rebounding. Well, she is, and uh, it's almost to a fault because we rely on her way too much. Uh, we've got to get some other kids in there, kind of helping her out uh, rebounding-wise. And uh, the other thing i got to say about Nicole is uh, she hasn't shot it real well this year. And I tell you what, there's a reason. There is a, a, a large plethora of 6'3 yeah. centers in this league <laughs> that all can play a little bit. And uh, my little 5'11 uh, post players have to shoot over those kids, and it's, uh, it's very tough. I know uh, it's been uh, somewhat of uh, you know a, a struggle for you as a coach to to watch these really close games. I know that's so hard on coaches and have to have the furious comebacks. But from a fan's perspective, many of which watching tonight, this team is fun to watch. One of the best teams in the nation in scoring, three-point shooting percentage, and three-pointers made per game. They are a fun team to watch. Well, they're they're interesting. Uh, <laughs> I think that we figured out that uh, Bree Lewis, who's a tremendous shooter, I think has gone one for her last 19 and threes. And uh, you know what? Last night she found ways to score other ways, and uh, that's that's a sign of a good team. Is even when things aren't going well the way they usually do. Uh, you find different ways to win, and Kiana Flax was outstanding last night. She is a winner. The kid's got a big heart, and she found ways to make great plays for us to be able to come back and win this ball game. Well, let's look at the highlights. Uh, safe to say a thrilling game last night at the multi, the Jennings and Missouri Western. Of course, of course Coach Slifer is the winningest coach in Western history. Josh Keister, his assistant here and there, was the head coach at uh, Missouri Western. So it's always a tough matchup. I know uh, even as the years go by, it changes some. And there were a lot of uh, Griffins in the stands last night for Tom Smith's last game. And really a great atmosphere at the multi. What a blackout night. Uh, were you in charge of that, Jonesy? That, uh, uh, lots of people were. I'm telling Spotlight you. Spotlight Group, Bob Jackson, uh, the folks from Spotlight Campus Activities, Team UCM, Innovative Public Relations, all those people. By far the most students we've ever had a game on the women's side. I want to say on the men's side, too. Uh, a tremendous crowd, and uh, they really got into it. It was a fun night, and uh, your team uh, got off to a good start in this game, fed off the energy, and uh, it was great to see that. Brianna Lewis did knock down her first shot, went quiet for a while, but stepped up again when it mattered. Boy, she definitely did. Uh, she, uh, she ended up uh, uh, getting off to a nice start. We are up 12-1, to 1, but then Missouri Western came storming back. Uh, but at the end of the half, heck, we played some very good basketball, got us a nice 10-point lead. There's uh, uh, Brielle making a banked 15-footer. That's okay. The bank was open, I found out. They the had laid hours. The bank was open. It was. And I tell you what, we were up nine at halftime, as we'll see, and the big three were quiet. We needed Brielle Watley, and she stepped up with 11 in the first half. Well, she did, and they were kind of sagging off of her. They were going to uh, you know, make sure that those inside kids didn't get easy looks. Look at that. Nice nine-point lead at half. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I should have called timeout 12 different times to start this second half and kept thinking, all right, we'll get going, we'll get going. And unfortunately, we didn't get going. Yeah, our, our students here at Sports Page are trained well. They're going to show all our highlights, but let's be honest. We, we look had great. that lead. We look great right there. There it is. There, there it is. is. <laughs> yes, yes. Those are the two buckets we made. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, after scoring 23 points in 20 minutes, they score 15 points in just a short amount of time. You know, but again, you have to also credit your team because they just find a way to hang in there. And they don't, one thing they do not do, they don't panic. No, no, there's not a lot of emotion. Uh, this is not one of those teams that's uh, 
super emotional and gets real high and gets real low. Uh, uh, and, and I think today at practice, that's one of the things we're going to just start talking about is, guys, this, this is, we are 14 and 2. This is fun. We've got to figure out a ways to, uh, you know, really start playing a little bit more consistent. If we can get more consistent, hey, we can go on the road and win these games. There's Brielle, tied a career high with 13 points. Last night, you, you got back to within six with 7.18 to go. We'll continue to watch, though. The bad news, you're down nine with 3.40 or so to go in the ball game. But there's Kiana Flax. Um, there's Brianna Lewis. You're starting to see here, we're going to start to see Ad Nicole Cadell in big-time players making big-time plays on well, both ends. And that was a big-time jumper there, right there by Bree Lewis. Uh, uh, for a young lady that, that has struggled from the field as badly as she has, you know what? She she doesn't care. She is going to take shots. She thinks every shot's going to go. I was trying the psychology last night on the radio. I told her after the game, you're back. Because of the way she played right here, she was one of five at the free throw line, then made those two yep. to pull us close, and then Nicole just does her thing. That's a tough, tough shot against a 6'3 uh, defender right there. Uh, they did foul her, and uh, Nicole struggled a little bit from the line, but made enough just to keep us going. Again, the Jennies found themselves down nine with 3.45 to go. They were down eight with 3.02 to go, but the defense, a couple block shots. There's a five second call, and the Jennies are going to get the basketball back here, and you could start to feel the pendulum swing and the crowd was into it and everything was the the, the meter was pointing in our direction well but we did the uh, flax makes a nice move right there uh brianna embry is kind of our end of the game point guard uh, she uh can't score but by golly she she guards and she makes winning plays uh they end up uh, we end up having the last shot and they end up not making it so uh that was a a, a tough tough end to it overtime and uh, again Keanu Flex had four points at halftime ends up with 22 and 10 boards as you outscored Western 17 to 9 the last three minutes of regulation and overtime she was incredible it was and I mean she makes a three-point play to start us off with and what do we do we let the best three-point shooter in the in the conference open for a wide open three to tie it up then Bree Lewis came that comes down and gets to the rim and, and makes a play Bree and Kiana, 36-0 at Trinity Valley last year. You said it earlier, they're just winners. They are. They, they know how to win. They're not scared of too much of anything. Uh, uh, Kiana just made some great defensive plays at the end also. Oh, my goodness. Yes. There it is. Miss layup for uh, Western. Basketball gods aren't going to let you win a game. You miss a wide-open layup. Well, it's interesting because it's a two-point game, and we're not going to give up a three, but we'd like to put a little bit more pressure there. I mean, it was a barely a screen, and that girl was wide open. Fortunately, Nicole came back and got the rebound and knocked down the free throw. And you did a good job hustling for a 50-50 ball late there in a last possession. A tie up, they went to the clock, two tenths of a second. Um, they did shoot a three. Let me ask you something. Can you get off a no, shot though no. in two tenths? I didn't no, know. No, they so. had to, uh, when we talked about it, we said, guys, it's gotta be a tip. Uh, with uh, less than, they tried to say four. I thought it was seven tenths, but they said four tenths and uh, they put two up. And so we knew that uh, do not foul. All they can do is tip it in. And you saw the final there, 74-71 in overtime as the Gens improved to 14-2, and 6-2 uh, and two in the league. 10-0 at home, folks. Central Missouri basketball is 19-0 at the multi this season. And again, Keanu Flax, 22 points, 10 boards. And a, a great performance by Brianna Lewis, who had 19 points in the game. And Nicole Cadell was rock solid. Didn't have her double-double last night. We mentioned Watley. But a different players stepped up, too. And I don't want to give the impression, Dave, that it is just the big three. I mean, I, uh, Hass and I on the radio, we love Quinesia Twine. She can knock down the three. She's long on defense. Simone Murray has the best-looking shot on the team when she comes off the bench. Kirsten Orton does the dirty work. The three-point guards come in and give you minutes and on down the list. Uh, you know, Danielle Berry was a key to one big win in this stretch. I mean, you, you've got some kids that it seems to me really understand their roles, and I think that's important. It is very important, and it's, it's kind of interesting trying to keep those kids confident because but face it, most of the time you do want one of those big three shooting the ball, but you got to be balanced enough that uh, when teams sag off like they did Brielle Watley, she's got to have the confidence that, uh, no, I can knock shots down. And, I mean, she shot an air ball three and came right back and swished the next one. So I was proud of that kid for, for coming through and uh, really knocking some, some big-time shots down, in that, particularly in that first half. The thing about the women's side, 15-team race, and, yeah, you're 14-2 and two, and you're nationally ranked and you're 6-2 and two in the league, and that's terrific. There's about seven teams still in striking distance for a conference crown as we approach the midway mark. It's a large conference 
where there are some long, long road games. And uh, these presidents are going to get what they want because there are some teams that are going to get very road weary by the end of this thing. Let's talk about this weekend now, Northwest. But first, Jenny's Basketball Alumni Weekend. Going to have a nice event for them uh, on Friday night. They're going to come to practice Friday. Then on uh, Saturday, the public is invited. 11 a.m. alumni game. Uh, then the team will have a little meal. The alumni team will have a meal. And then we'll introduce them at halftime of your game. A lot of your former players are coming back. That'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Uh, there's uh, uh, They have been on me. They said, come on, coach, let's have an alumni game. And so uh, <laughs> once we got this thing started, there's been uh, – a lot of different uh, kids come back and then we've got some of the older players too so and a couple of the older players I guess are going to play. Let me ask you right here live on TV will you do PA with me I think you'd be fun. I think we'll give yeah. that a shot right. that All sounds right. good. You and I you and right. I on the call of, the, uh, yep. of yep. the alumni game coach Slifer's definitely got a future I think as a color commentator in basketball after his uh, career but um, you know this this team's playing well but every game in the league is a challenge and that's certainly the case coming up Saturday at 1:30 against Northwest they've got a new head coach so it's a brand new system. And they're a team that plays zone. And kind of like the Missouri Western men yet last night played all zone. Well, this uh, Northwest Missouri women's team is going to press, play zone, and it's going to just be a different style of game than we're normally used to. Then Wednesday, we'll look ahead for TV. Next Wednesday, you go to Lincoln, and that's a tough place. They've got some really good players. And, and again, an emotional game for you. Uh, Nicole Collier is their head coach first year, played for you at Western, coached for you here at Central. So, um, and I know she'll do a good job and have that team ready to go. Well, I'm, I'm proud of what she's done so far. They. Uh, they uh, ended up losing, I think, three in a row, but they came back and won last week, and so she was back excited again, and uh, she has done a great job in a tough, tough situation. I mean, I think it's not an easy job, and, uh, you know, Katie uh, came there and did a great job, and now uh, Nicole's taken over for her and has done a great job. Well, this Jenny's team is certainly talented. They're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, the folks are enjoying it. The crowd was unbelievable last night. Yes, they were. What's the, what's the key, though, for, for this team to have a special season? Well... I, I, we do a lot of little things very poorly. We're not a team that pays much attention to detail yet. And we've got to find a way to get that uh, figured out because uh, uh, I, I'm just getting tired of watching the ball go up. And we'll have some kids that don't block out at all. They just kind of turn. And, you know, if Nicole gets a rebound, fine. Or Flax gets it, fine. But uh, it, more often than not, it's their kids getting the ball. And so if we can, if we can kind of solidify our defense and rebounding, we're, we're going to be tough for anybody to beat. And the league, again, it's unique, uh, not playing everybody twice. And uh, I tell you that every game's a challenge. And you look, you can't look at Northwest or Lincoln's overall records because they're not one of those teams at the top. But as we've seen, anybody can beat anybody. Well, I mean, Northwest is like 10 and 5 mm -hmm. or whatever. So they're still pretty darn good. And uh, this is, uh, you know, this is a new coach that uh, didn't have a whole lot of uh, time to recruit. And uh, most of these kids are still Gene's kids. And they didn't win a lot of games last year. So they've done a great job so far. And also this coming Saturday, folks, Military Appreciation Day. All active and retired military personnel and their families admitted free. The Jenny's alumni game at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Coach Slifer on the PA mic, so that will be a lot of fun, guaranteed. Then the Jens rank 16th this week. Uh, take it on Northwest at 1.30, meals to follow at 3.30. Coach Slifer, congratulations on the success so far. And Bill Turnage will be in this seat next week uh, to uh, right. help you talk about a couple of victories. Great. Looking forward to that. All right, in just a moment, uh, we'll visit with the leading scorer for Jenny's basketball. That is junior forward Kiana Flax, and it's next here on KMOS-TV. This February, explore African-American history. Follow Whitney Young in his fight for civil rights. We understood power and we understood people. Remember television pioneer Alex Haley and his groundbreaking series, Roots. It was riveting. He was a master storyteller. And celebrate the talents of Rosetta Tharp, godmother of rock and roll. She was a phenomenal showwoman. It's all here during Black History Month on PBS. Hi, I'm Galen Doty. And I'm Wes Hinches. We invite you to join us right here on Agro Legacy. Our mission is to help you pass your legacy to the next generation the best way possible. That's Agro Legacy right here on KMOS TV. He was a teacher uh, and a way, a person who just in interacting with him, he reminded you of a larger horizon and a larger purpose. He just had something that instantly made you a student of whatever it is he had. 
When you outgrow Fred Rogers as a kid and you say, I don't want to watch that anymore, something has been lost. And it's not innocence, it's a kind of spirituality that is amazing. And he's, he's really one of the towering figures of the 20th century. He's really an amazingly deep, deep human being. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. from Dallas, Texas, but I moved from Dallas to Fort Worth in Halton City. Um, I started playing basketball in middle school. I was really a soccer player, but my dad, you know, got me, in, got me into basketball. So that's how that came about. Out of high school, I went to Oklahoma State um, my freshman year and my sophomore year, and I transferred to a JUCO in Texas. It was the top number one um, basketball team in the nation, and I, then I transferred here to Central Missouri. I heard about y'all through my teammate, Brianna Lewis. Uh, she had committed here and I was gonna go to Lamar, but I ended up changing my decision and I ended up coming here. My relationship with my coaches is very good. Um, you know, we always talk after, after practice, during practice, they're always giving me pointers to improve my game in the game and off the court. My relationship with my teammates are, are good. I mean, they always, they always ask me for advice, you know, I'm, there, I'm more of the team leader, you know, and I'm just coming in here, so that's kind of like a difficult task, but I mean, I, I like the, the role of being the leader for them. Typical practice for me, um, I work hard. I mean, you have to always work hard, you know, because it carries on in the game. You know, you practice just like you play. And I feel like if I go hard in practice, it'll, it'll go to the game. As a team, we try to do stuff as a team, you know, try to be as one instead of, you know, separate, you know, so. Our, really, our main goal is to just work hard, you know, give it effort, you know. I think to make the team better, by myself personally, um, I just have to come to practice and game 100%, you know, ready to do what I have to do and play my role and let everybody know that they have roles to play too. And, that's how we can succeed if everybody plays their role. My playing style would be streaky. You know, I'm not looking to score a lot, but you know, I'm always looking for that rebound or that that extra play. You know, or get my teammates open. I'm more of a, I'm more of a paint. I'm in the paint area where I like to just bang with the post. But I'm really a guard. But I like banging with the post. I don't really have any superstitions. I mean, I have to listen to my music before the game. I always have my beats on. I really, you know, pray and that's probably about it. So I'm already pumped and ready. I think that our season, I think we're, we're, we're good. We're, we're learning things as the, the season prolongs, you know, as far as communicating and talking off the court, you know, defense. It's, it's, always, it's always something new that we, we learn in each game. And I think that, you know, as we continue this season, we'll grow and get more mature and know what we need to do. There is an actual person that inspires me. My, my high school coach back in Hawthorne City, I talked to her every day. I mean, she was the person that came to my middle school when I wanted to go to a different high school, and she told me that, you know, she would make me the best player I can be. And from, from, that, from that day on to now, she's still there in my ear, and she still helps me throughout my life with basketball. Outside of basketball, I would have a, my hobby would be going to the movies. 
I love watching all the movies that come out, especially scary movies. And I like to bring my teammates with me, so they'll be scared too. So that's really what I like to do, watch the movies, listen to music. I'm a music head. I like this. The fan base, everybody's nice. Everybody around the campus is nice. Um, it, it was, it, I thought it was going to be hard to, you know, be comfortable, you know, but it actually isn't. And I'm now an hours away from home, so, you know, I thought I would get homesick, but I actually have and I like it here. You know, I'm more focused than I have ever been in my basketball career. Just nine games into her Jenny's career, the Haltom City, Texas product has already turned a lot of heads with her amazing ability. She's averaging 21 points per game, 6.7 rebounds per contest, while shooting 54% from the floor, 52% from three, and 77% at the free throw line. And more importantly, she is a winner. Last year, along with teammate Brianna Lewis, she led Trinity Valley Community College to a national title with a perfect 36-0 record. In just a moment, we'll tell you where all the mules and jennies are competing this weekend as Sports Page rolls on right after this. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Load up your golf clubs, grab your spikes, and head out to the first tee. As our way of saying thank you for your financial contribution at the $50 level or higher, KMOS will send you a member card. In addition to great discounts at restaurants, attractions, and bed and breakfast all across Missouri, the member card also offers two-for-one greens fees at several Missouri golf courses. Improve your swing while taking in beautiful Lake Vistas or experience the Rumble at America's only golf course above an active mine. Take your game to the next level by playing around on us. Call 1-800-753-3436 and support KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Thank you. Thank you for watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. For one final time this week, welcome back to Sports Page. Before we put the finishing touches on this week's show, let's run down our upcoming schedule of events so you know where to follow the Mules and Jennings. The MIAA leading Mules basketball squad will host Northwest Missouri Saturday at 3.30 at the Multi. It's Military Appreciation Day with all active and retired military personnel and their families admitted free. It's also Dollar Hot Dog Day courtesy of Sodexo, so come on out and Cheer on the Mules, leading the MIAA. Next Wednesday, the Mules are in Jeff City to take on Lincoln at 7.30 at Jason Gym. You can catch every Mules game on 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, and WarrensburgRadio.com. And a tip-off on 90.9 The Bridge. Check out the webcast as well at America One, production done by the UCM Media Network. The 16th-ranked Jenny's basketball team will host their reunion weekend with an 11 a.m. alumni game Saturday at the Multi. The public is invited to attend. The Jens will then take on Northwest at 1.30 Saturday, and the Jenny's alumni game will take place at 11. As I mentioned, the Jenny's alumni will be introduced at halftime of that 1.30 game. Next Wednesday, the 16th-ranked Jenny's will be in Jeff City for an MIAA contest with Lincoln. That's at 5.30 at Jason Gym. You can catch every Jenny's game on 1450 Coco, 98.5 The Bar, and Warrensburg Radio. 
UCMedia.com. Also watch every webcast via pay-per-view by the UCM Media Network at America One. The Mules wrestling team will travel to Lindenwood in St. Charles Thursday night for a 7 o'clock MIAA duel with the Lions. Friday night at 7, the Mules step out of the conference to take on McKendry in dual action in Lebanon, Illinois. The UCM track and field team will be in Lawrence, Kansas Friday for the Jayhawk Classic. Action begins at 11 a.m. The number one ranked Jenny's bowling team is off this weekend and they return to the lanes February 1st through the 3rd at the Prairie View A&M Invitational in Arlington, Texas. And Mules All-American wide receiver Delaney Walker has punched his ticket to the Super Bowl. The H-back for the San Francisco 49ers joins Jeff Wright as the second Mule to participate in the big game. Jeff Wright started in four Super Bowls for the Buffalo Bills. Walker was an All-MIAA selection for the Mules in 2004 and 2005. And with that, we conclude this edition of the Central Missouri Sports Page. The next two weeks, the original host of the show, UCM Athletic Hall of Famer Bill Turnage will sit in this seat as I tend to baseball and basketball radio broadcast duties. So be sure and tune in to catch up with Bill as well as the latest on the Mules and Jennies. Until then, for our entire crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching the Central Missouri Sports Page here on KMOS-TV, Missouri PBS.